for 3,000 into the fold yeah. in that one day. Am I talking to someone? Yeah. So if you have an opportunity yeah. to shout, yeah. it's useful to give God a, a wonderful shout of praise. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. 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 I don't know if I'm communicating. Yeah. Yeah. Tap your left and left on the right and tell them, no matter the matter you must matter, because you are set by my side. Because I matter in life. My life is anchored. and gentlemen, you can have your seat. But we're going to have other portions of scriptures as I go along because we're going to see. My theme this morning is, it is written. Am I talking to somebody? It is written. If Jesus was the one who spoke to the devil that it is written, in case you do not know, it is written. Written means it has been declared. It has been established. Am I talking to somebody, yes, you might see people printing in ignorance, but I came to remind you that it is written. What is written, which was concealed, is being revealed to you today. What was concealed yesterday, today is a revelation. Hallelujah. Yesterday might have been a mystery, but today is a revelation. It's no longer a mystery. Colossians say, For it was a mystery, my God, it was a mystery. But now it's revealed. Christ in you, the hope of glory. In Corinthians, Paul writing, he says, For if the kings of this world had known, they would not have crucified the king of glory. It was a mystery in their time. But in our time, it's a revelation. There are certain things that are written, which other people still do not have a revelation of it, but it has been revealed. Yes. And so when you know what has been written, which is revealed already to you, you ought to break Hallelujah. every limit in your life yes, and advance in every circumstance. Most of us, we are well read, we are well educated. Driving into this place, on the highway, you have speed limits. Mm -hmm. A certain, a certain place, my wife was laughing. She said, you see what is written there? It is written, if you go above speed limit, your fine will be doubled. It is written. Nobody stands there to remind you because it is written. So I don't know if I'm talking. Yes. Yes. Don't sleep with me. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes. It is written. The law says if you if you drive through the red light, what is going to happen? You're going to pay. You're going to pay the price. Yes. If you go beyond your speed, you're going to pay. If you knock down a pedestrian, what is going to happen? You're going to face the law. Yes. And certainly, insurance is going to... Uh, they don't want you to want to show you up. <laughs> it is written. There are certain things we are too versed with, which are written. Which is good, though, because it makes you shape your life in a way that you keep away from trouble. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Yeah, it's good. But then, what matters most in life, many of us don't know. The Bible says in the book of Daniel, that in the days of Daniel, in the days of Daniel, when he was in captivity, he had been in captivity for so long, and the children of Israel have been in captivity for 70 years. Yeah, My God, am I talking yeah, to yes. you? And he was, though he was a name in the kingdom of Persia, yeah. though he was a personality, though he carried capacity, yeah. he knew that he was still a captive. captive. Yes. 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 Even though he was in a position of authority, yes. he knew he was a covenant child. Yes. And that is not where the covenant ought to place him. Mm. The Bible says he wrote that I, Daniel, knew by the books. In other words, that it was prophesied yes. by the prophet Jeremiah yes. that Israel ought to be in captivity only for 70 years. Yes. And then Amplified Version says, and it was 70 years. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was 70 years. When it is written and you do not know, your period 
year of captivity can extend. I prove it to you. Yes. In Genesis chapter number 15, I think verse number 8 or verse number 13, the Bible says, when Abraham was entering into a covenant with God, and along the line, Abraham fought out a bit in his faith. He said, how shall this be? The Bible says God told him to offer sacrifices for one doubt. Raise an altar, offer sacrifices. And after that, God told him, let it be known unto you that your descendants shall be in captivity for how many years? 400 years. And afterwards, they shall come out with great possession. Yes. It is written. It was spoken. It was established. But the children of Israel didn't know that it has been established that the time to be in Egypt was going to be 400 years. But it took them 430 years in Egypt. Why? Because there was nobody who was in front who knew that it has been declared by God himself that the time to be in Egypt is 400 years. Why? Because these people were in Goshen. Goshen was a little breakthrough. Like many people under the sound of my voice, they experienced a little breakthrough and they think that is their king. The breakthrough of Canaan is greater than the breakthrough of Goshen. The level you experience a little breakthrough doesn't mean you are limited at that level. Am I talking to someone? Yes. Because it is written, you shall be the head and not the tail. As long as you have not reached the head, you are still around the neck. There is still a height yes. to climb. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. yes, sir. I'm going somewhere. Follow me attentively. Just laying a good foundation. Yes. Then, most people who are believers have lost their lives along the line because they do not know. What is not written is what has been embraced and what is governing their lives. What is written is what is not followed. What they don't even know. And once you don't know it, you are still in captivity. Just quoted you a glaring example of Israel in Egypt. Once you don't know it. So Daniel understood by books that the time has come for captivity to be broken. Amen. Hallelujah. And he decided to stand on behalf of Israel for captivity to be over. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you that there are things we embrace while growing up in Christianity, in our faith. For example, in my life, when we got saved in our community, the community where we grew up, it was believed, I believe it still believed even now, many still believe it, that when you eat in your dream, it means you are being initiated. So anytime, I don't know if many people here heard that before, that when you are eating in your dream, it means that it's an initiation taking place. Demons, you'll be possessed of demons. But it is not written anywhere. <laughs> so in most of the times, people go to sleep, in their dream they eat. <laughs> <laughs> then they get up in the morning, and they start looking for one man of God or the other to deliver them. Why? Because it is said, it is only said, but it is not written. Are you with me? Yes, that is religion. I came to spoil religion. Religion has kept us at the same spot for so long a time. From the time we got saved till now, many years ago, we are not progressing. Because we believe in religion. Yes. Can I define religion to you? Yes. Do you know what religion, religion is? Christianity is not a religion. No. no, religion is man's way. Man is struggling to get to God. Yes. Man is struggling to please God, to reach out to God. But Christianity says God has decided. 
decided to reach out to man because man couldn't, man does not have the ability, man does not have capacity to reach out to God. So God came down. That is why the Son of God became the Son of Man, so that the sons of men can become the sons of God. Yes. And as a result, we are more confused than before. Yes. We are told how ancestral curses are keeping us. If you ask Pastor Henry, do ancestral curses exist? Yes, they exist. Are we under ancestral curses? No, it is written. We are under ancestral blessings. Yes, sir. My God, hey. If you study Galatians chapter number 3, you will understand that the seed that Abraham was told by God in Genesis 12 yeah. that, that spread right through to Genesis 15 and beyond the seed your seed, through your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed yeah. what is he talking about every day we sing Abraham's blessings are mine, who is Abraham? Abraham stands as a spiritual ancestor yes, sir. which means we are under Ancestral blessings. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, yes. it's a new creature. Yes. All yes. things are possible. Yes. Am I tell you the truth? Yes. Can I tell you the truth? Yes, yes. What is a curse? Curse. curse. In your own way, simple definition. I don't want standard definition. The, one of the simplest ways to define a curse is evil words released against a person. Yes. Negative words released against a person. Yes. Simple, right? Yes. Everybody understands. Yes. Now, the first curse that ever existed was released by God. Yes. In the book of Genesis, chapter number three. Yes. I think somewhere around verse number seventeen. God cursed Eve came to Adam, he didn't curse Adam. Did he? No, no, you're confused. No, he cursed Adam, right? Yeah. Oh, by the students now. Did he curse him? Did he curse the serpent? Yes. <laughs> okay, now you see, we are playing a trick. We are reading. Okay. <laughs> As you said, because you're listening to the voice of your wife, you are putting on the tree which I commanded you say you shall not eat of it. The ground honor you is cursed. Not at the ground. Hello. Yes. Perfect, son. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I will stay here and speak the rest of you. Yeah, you feel on this. Yes. And the next time I continue. But I have limited time to squeeze everything together. Yes. The ground was cursed. Why was Eve cursed? Because when God formed Adam, He blessed Adam. Yes. Eve was not yet out. Yes. So Eve would be cursed because the blessing was pronounced at Adam. Yes. But because you have been blessed, even God, who established spiritual principles, cannot go against them. So when he blessed, he cursed, he cursed the serpent, he came to Adam. Adam already was blessed. Yes. He cursed Amen. the earth. He said, I'm still going to do something that is not perfect. Since you are going to you, the earth, all what I gave you in the garden was to cultivate the garden, which has to do with the earth. Now I curse the earth. The earth will not respond to you accordingly, but you are blessed already. Amen. What God has blessed cannot be cursed. The prophet was hired by Balak the king yes. to curse Israel. Yes. Yes. Is it possible for me to curse who the Lord has blessed? It is written. Yes. I will study the Bible. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I said we have ancestral blessings and you're looking at me. Uh, what are you talking about? But I still have my great-grandfather was suffering from this, my granddad was suffering from this, 
and my dad was suffering from this, I am suffering from this, it's a curse in our lineage. No, it's your mindset that permitted it to function right to you. Because whatever is permitted on earth is permitted in heaven. Yes. Heaven does not impose on you. No. Do you understand? Do you realize yes. God is not an imposter? He does not impose his will on you. No. That's why you have to accept Christ. He doesn't force you to receive him. Exactly. Right. Amen. The way you accept him, Bible says the just shall live by faith. faith. Yes. So curses are released by words. And between the, the words of a man and the words of God, which one is more powerful? The word of God released blessing on you. Yes. That means the blessing is more powerful than the curse. Yes. The moment you came into Christ, that curse was dissolved. Amen. Because the power of God in Christ yes. crushed the force of that curse. Amen. But because your mindset still thinks of curse, yes. therefore you still see your life going the same way it was before. All things have become new, meaning yes. even your system has to be changed has to be transformed by the presence and the power of God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. It is written. Life that we have in Christ is not the life that the Old Testament people lived. The Bible says in the Gospel according to John, chapter number 1, verse 12, it says, but as many as received it to them, he gave the power to become the, the sons of God. Can the son of God be cursed? No. No. He gave what? Power. It means they came to Christ. They came to God. They were born by power. Yes. If a curse is powerful, there is a greater power that gave birth to you. Yes. And in verse number 13, there is something written. It says, children born not of flesh, born not of blood, nor of the will of man. That means even man has no say concerning this category of people. I don't know. Oh, yes. That whatever man says, not the will of man is permitted to oppress them. He yes. said, but children born of God. Yes. Amen. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which now takes me to the core of my message from Galatians chapter number 4, verse number 1. Those who can write, it's time to write. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter number 4 and verse number 1. I've been talking and talking and talking and you know, <laughs> saying so many things. Now, I want to narrow it down. Now, what I mean is that as long as the inheritor hey, is a child and under age, he does not differ from a slave. Although he is the master, who is he? Of all what? Although he is the master of all the estates, now I say to you, as long as the inheritor, the head, is a child under age, he is not different from a slave. That means you are the head of the promise, but you are a slave. <laughs> so, you do not get it. I'm going to break it down. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. Have you ever heard of the word minor? Yes. Minor. Yes. This guy is still a minor. That girl is still that child is still a minor. Yes. You know the word minor, right? Yes. Yes. That's yes. what they are talking about. Yes. There are three words I want to be able to explain. That you, when you start talking about hair and inheritance, you're bringing in the aspect of law. Am yes. I talking now? Yes. yes. Family law to be specific. Yes. Now, a head, as long as he's a child, does not differ from a slave, though he be Lord of all. Hmm. Now, he goes further to say, in verse 2, we tell you, but he is put under guardians. That is to say, he is placed in custody yes. of somebody. Yes. But he is under guardians and administrators or trustees until the date fixed by his father. I know that. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> until the date fixed by his father. Paul was talking about the law. So the Old Testament is the New Testament conceived. 
And the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That is to say, God was saying something. And the children of Israel were not understanding. Many people also tied to the law. But what they don't understand is that the promise was the reason why the law was given. No, the promise was not given because of the law, but rather the law was given because of the promise. I don't want to get into that. I'm trying to pass across a message right now. The Bible says there that, therefore, so Paul was talking about the promise and the law. That because the Israelites could not understand, they were not reasonable enough. They were not mature to be able to receive and to perceive and to be able to see the way God wanted them to see. As a result of that, because they were going astray, they were not able to accommodate, to handle the blessings the Lord has given to them. So he gave them the Lord. Do not do this, do not do that, until that time. Do you understand? Until that time, when you've been mature enough, and when is the time of maturity? When the seed, because that's what the promise says, when the seed of Abraham, who is Christ Jesus, until Christ, that is why Christ said, I came to fulfill the law. The law ends because I have come. The law was given to protect, to keep you, to guide you until my coming. Now that I've come, stop talking about the law. Stop talking about the promise. Amen. Amen. Do you see that? Now, coming to what I want to say. The scripture says, hey, as long as he's a child, he does not differ from a slave. Though he is the master of all the property, it is your property. But you are placed under an administrator, under a trustee, under a custodian, a guardian, somebody to take care of you. In Africa, you will flog you. I know in Canada, you will not flog you. <laughs> you understand? In Africa, you will flog you. Yes, sir. <laughs> you understand? Yes. When you make a mistake, he will whip you. The person who is supposed to be your servant because he is the one taking care of your property, he is the one flogging you. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. All right. You are hungry. You want to eat. You tell you sit down, my friend. But then all the money belongs to you. Yes. Am I talking? Yes. And it is written in the will. My God. Oh my God. It is written in the will that all this estate belongs to this young girl, to this young boy. As long as the young girl or the young boy is still unable to handle responsibility, yes, yes, yes. has not attained maturity, yes. he is still being tossed to and fro here and there. That's the reason why people come to church today. Next Sunday, I don't feel like going to church. They are just behaving like they are because they are still spiritual babies, not being able to stand on their feet. Forty-five, fifty-five, and so on. They are of age. 
according to their age, they should be able to handle responsibility. Yes. There are some who are one year old in the Lord, two years, three years, five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, but they are still spiritual babies. Yes. They are called incapable majors. Yes. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. So this is what Paul is talking about. Yes, sir. He said, hey, hey, even though all the promises were declared, were written, all these breakthroughs and blessings are available for you. The problem you have is that you are easily possible. You are close to and fro, here and there. You are instable. You are unstable. You are moved by every wind on the train, running to and fro, running hate and scatter. You have not been, you have not been, you have not received the conformity of Christ in you. Yes. If the man of God says, no matter the matter, you say I was smart, but in you nothing. There is no base, there is no foundation for that declaration to settle on. I don't know. Yes. You don't know what is written. <laughs> a little child who can read the book of Genesis. You see, I want you to read the book of Genesis all this week. They read it. They have the ability to read. But what they are reading, they really don't understand. Yes, it's true. So Paul says, until the time set forth by the Father. Let's read for that. Go to verse 3. I see I have a few things to analyze. So we, Jewish Christians, also, when we were minors, we were kept like slaves under the rules of the Hebrew ritual and subject to the elementary teachings of a system of external observations and regulations. Not things written. Yes. Things that people just feel that they see. So we are more taught in the area of satanic manipulations. But we have been translated. In Colossians chapter number 1 verse 13, it says, He has delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of His love. And there we have redemption of sin. The redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. We have been delivered. We have been set free. And in Galatians chapter number 5 verse 1, it says, Stand therefore in this liberty, wherefore Christ has set you free, and do not be yoked again to the elemental principles of this world. What everybody believes is subject to change. Yes. Yes. What the doctor says is subject to change. Yes. What the economy says is subject to change. Yes. What the system says is subject to change. Yes. Anybody who passes a degree who cannot last forever, you don't need to anchor your faith or your trust in that person. Yes. Anybody you see today will not be there tomorrow. Yes. Give them the next 100 years okay. if you want to. In the next 100 years, they will disappear. Yes. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. If you want to live an eternal life, why give your trust and your confidence to a man who will not last the next 50 years? <laughs> Verse number five. In this freedom, Christ has made us free. Can you put it up again, please? Verse number five, Galatians 4 5. I want us to read. There is something I want to show us. Galatians 4 5. Can you put Thank you. To purchase the freedom of to ransom, to redeem, to atone for those who were subject to the law that we might be adopted and have sonship conferred upon us. And that word, sonship conferred upon us and be recognized as God's sons. I want to explain something here. The word adoption there is the Greek word cutesia. Cutesia. And the word sons, in English, we only call it sons. A male child is son. Whether what age is son. But in the Greek, there are three different words that define sons at three different stages of life. I told you about minors. At the level of minors, you have two stages. You have technion and you have technon. Those are two Greek words. I'm going to explain. So 
So don't be lost. Hallelujah. <coughs> now, at the technion stage, unto us a child is born. Isaiah prophesied. And unto us a son is given. So according to the Hebrew culture, sons are not born. Sons are given. Sons go through what is called Hyodesia. Adoption. I'm going to explain. Now, unto us a child. So Isaiah prophesied. And Jesus was represented in the three stages. So what is the technon stage? The technon stage is adolescence. Oh, 12 years of age. So, Jesus' life is represented in the Bible in three stages. When he was born, at the age of 12. Right? Technion, Technion, and then there is a third level, which is maturity, which is major. No longer minor. It is called, it's the Greek word helios. Where the word heodesia is taken from. The word helios is a grown-up man. A grown-up person who is able to handle responsibility, who can be responsible for his or her acts. Am I talking? Yes. Whom you can entrust confidently with responsibility. And you are sure that this person cannot fail. Am I talking? Yes. So, now, it is according to the Hebrew culture, when the child becomes of age. So, at the age of an infant, a baby boy. Jesus never performed any miracle. <laughs> Yet, he was still the Messiah. Amen. He didn't save anybody. Exactly. He didn't deliver cast out any demon. At the age of 12, at the age of adolescence, Jesus didn't cast out any demon. No miracle, no signs, no wonders. But at the age of 30, he would his year to please. Now, according to the Hebrew culture, when a technon has become a heos. That is a response, an age of maturity, responsibility. What the father will actually do is that the father will call the community together and introduce the son. Cause him now son, heos. Hallelujah. That today, Henry has become a heos, no longer a technon. That is to say, Anywhere he stands in my name, all that I have will back him up. All that I am, all my authority is vested upon him. So when you see him, give him the respect you give to me. So at the age of, you know, when Jesus was born, there was no voice from heaven to introduce him. This is my beloved son. At the age of 12, no voice in heaven to introduce him. But at the age of 30, when Jesus was deep yeah. into Jonah, yeah. when he was coming out, the Bible says the heavens were open, yeah. and his father introduced him. Yeah. This is my beloved son. Am I talking to someone? Yeah. Yeah. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. In Christianity, until you become a heos, there is no way God will entrust a level of wealth in your hands. Because when he gives you money, you start thinking of one skirt and the other. When he gives you money, you start thinking of, am I talking to someone? Yes. You see, now, yeah. if you are not a hero, you are still a technion and a technon, your prayer life is full of, Lord, yeah. daddy give me candies. Daddy give me candies. I need some candies. I need some more candies. Am I talking to somebody? Say, daddy, I want to go to the playground. Give me an opportunity to go to the playground. Men who are mature don't ask for candies. Days. 40 days. 
a techno that was not fast 40 days <laughs> When fasting is declared in church, he runs away. He doesn't come to church until after the fasting. <laughs> When prayer meetings are declared in church, you know those who are pregnant and pregnant. <laughs> Only the heels will come because they know why they are coming. Yeah. And even some of the pregnant and the pregnant, when they come for the meetings, the prayer meetings, all their prayer topic, if the prayer topic is not centered around them, that is to say, my candy, my this, my that. That's an indication. When the heels are asking the Father for communities, they're asking the Father, give me this land of God. Give me the people around me, everybody around me. Thank you, give me the grace to be able to accept them, to transform them. I pray for this brother. I pray for the sister. We your inheritance. Amen. And what you are actually doing in the place of prayer is that you are allocating your inheritance to people. Yes. Yes. Say this person is in need. I bless this person with a check of ten thousand dollars because they need this check. I bless this one. I'm sending. I'm giving a scholarship onto this one. That is the level where he is enter into. Then when they ask the father, I need my back. I've come to be taught. Yeah. The father taught it. Why? Because he is a responsible son. Yes. Uh -huh. Stop asking for candies. Come on. Because candies are not expensive. Father will give you five dollars. Don't take care of your candies. <laughs> you are never growing beyond a certain level. Because your mindset is me, myself, and I. Little children don't they don't think about others. They only think about themselves. Oh Lord. And when they start getting at the age of adolescence, they start thinking about my girlfriend and I. Uh -huh. See, that's where the problem is because they start doing my girlfriend and I. That's it. Richard. Oh, in your generation, there is a level, there is a position, there is a place that belongs to you. Yes. And it has been vacant for a long time. Oh, yes. And the father has been waiting for your emancipation. Yeah. The way he utilizes their means emancipation. The way he utilizes their means showing forth. Yes. It doesn't necessarily. It, I told this adoption, right? Mm -hmm. In Greek, is the word eudesia. And since there is no English word to directly represent that word, in English they translated it as adoption. If you just read it, adoption it means someone is taking you from another family to to come in as if you are his child or her child. But that's not the meaning. That's not the actual meaning. The actual meaning of the Greek word heutasia means to show forth as a son. In other words, to declare upon your son. Wherever you enter, wherever you stand, I stand with you. Where the source of it. That's why Jesus can say, I and my father are one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, the son does not accept that which he has seen the father do. Philip, you have been with me all this yes. while and you did not know me. Because Philip says, show us the Father and suffice. He said, Philip, you have been with me all this while. So who was talking? The Father. Yes, yeah, Philip was looking at the face of Jesus. Yet yeah, it was the Father talking. Because the Father is the same with the Son. Yes. Hallelujah. That means, if the Son starts to decree, that wherever you were limited, wherever a curse was placed upon your life, I replace that curse with a blessing. Yes. That is what takes place. Because a superior authority has diminished the inferior authority that kept you bound. Yes. He didn't only speak, he actually demonstrated what he spoke. Oh Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen. I want you to shout, I must matter. I must matter. Yes. Very few people shouted it. I must 
Sparta. Shout, I must matter. I must matter. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Daniel understood by the books. By what? Yes. Not by general information. Your life is not an opinion pool. Where people cast their opinions and it affects your life. Your life is not a public refuge. Where everybody, when they are failing, they come and say, this one is failing more than me. No, you are not failing more than them. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. For the first shall be, and the last shall be, there is an ever-changing grace. The grace that changes every circumstance when it comes upon you. Oh my God. Hallelujah. So what you are afraid of is fiction. <laughs> you know what fiction is, right? Yeah. Fiction is vain imagination. Something that is made, made to appear as if it is. Real. But it is not. Fake. It is not real. It's fiction. Yes. Hallelujah. Vain imagination. Yes, so all what appears to be, that is why Christ went to the cross. Hallelujah. When he went to the cross, the Bible says he will not die the second time again. Because once and for all, yes. he met the demands to bring you into sonship. Yes. <laughs> and as a result of that, if you are still a spiritual baby, Paul writes, he said, when I talk, you should have been eating, you know, hard food. You are still desiring spiritual meal. You are still looking for milk to drink. Then you have tea and you are drinking milk. You should be a bone cracker. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, every challenge that comes your way, measure it with the Father. Yes. Because the Father says, this is my beloved son. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. has come to prove whether you know who you are yes. in Christ. In Christ. Him, Hallelujah. we move. In Him, we have our being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you happy you are here today? Yes. Yes. Are you excited? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. So what has been written about your life? Do you know what is written? The Bible says he made him who knew no sin to be seen for us. Yeah. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I am not a sinner. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. So don't define me by yesterday. Define me by my today. <laughs> yes, sir. Little yes. children keep grudges. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Challenge. Little children will tell you, Daddy, you promised me, you yeah. said you're going to buy me this. You're not want it till now. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. But the good thing about little children is that even though they remind you, the next moment they forget. Yeah. <laughs> you see, a little child can have a quarrel with his friend, but the next day they are best of friends. Yes. Amen. And Jesus said, you have to be like one of these little ones. Yes. If in this church yes. we have only technions and technons, people who know every day they are fighting, when you become of age, there is something you have to reject. Yes. Amen. When somebody, when somebody offends you, you look at that person, you know this one is still growing to maturity. Yes. Whether he knows what was declared. Who is? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes. 
sir. After this service, there are going to be tests. Yes, it's true. There are going to be trials. Yes. Oh, no. Some things is going to be as if hell is broken loose mm. against oh, no. It's true. But listen to me. Ooh. If it happens to you, that is to say you are one of those that your father has declared. Hey. You are one of those that the Father has declared. Amen. Have you taken note of my servant Job? Uh, yeah. There is no like him. Yeah. Immediately, what does the devil say? He said, Is he worshiping you for nothing? Yeah. Stretch yes. forth your hand and see. Yes. So the devil wants to disprove God yeah. that what God is saying is wrong. Yes. Yes. But God is never. never. Amen. Amen. Let every man be a liar. Your life is not progressing. If you are one of those, let me see you are not. The Bible says, I think somewhere, Proverbs chapter number 9, verse 11, or chapter 11, verse 9, one of those. It says, A hypocrite with his mouth will destroy his neighbor. He says, But by the knowledge are the righteous delivered. Yes. Then, 2 Peter. Verse, chapter 1 verse 2 says grace and peace grace means unmerited favor yes. and well-being be multiplied unto you according to your knowledge of Christ of God and of Christ yes. that is to say how much of the Father and of Jesus you know is how much you will dwell in peace Amen. and be favored in life Amen Stop inquiring about what Satan is doing here. Mm. Satan is not only present. Mm. Only my father is only present. Yes. Your father is only yes. present. Yes. Shout the living hallelujah. If there is one sick amongst you, I want to pray for you. If you feel sick in your body, don't be ashamed. I'm not, I'm not going to say, oh, you are not sick. No. In case the devil is attacking your health. Because certainly he tries to attack through all means, right? <coughs> but you have to kick him out. Yes. Now it's time to knock him out. Yes. Shall the better in case you are sick in your body, run outside. Uh -huh.